Dobry wieczór Państwu. I will have to switch into English. Well, for a change of bit of patent law, today I would like to talk about patent challenges for makers, challenges that I personally see as the weaknesses of the patent system. More precisely, I would like to highlight two aspects, uh, namely the patent quality and patent flexibilities. Oh, I will use this. So first, I would like to present the, the term, the notion of the maker movement. The maker movement is a technology-driven extension of the do-it-yourself culture, a phenomenon of individual garage and basement uh, inventors of technology enthusiasts who do like to share their ideas. The term derives from uh, the title, The Make magazine, established in 2005, but the phenomenon of making is much, much older. In fact, making and do-it-yourself activities are inherent for human behavior. I would say that everyone can be a maker. Maker deliver, uh, makers deliver great solutions from various fields of technology, for instance, from robotics, electronics, 3D printing, solar cells. Uh, to a great extent, they are self-sufficient and in charge of complete product development because they see a problem, they seek and find a solution, then build a prototype, and very often they are successful in commercialization their ideas. And in general, they are cool, but in spite of their coolness, they sometimes have to face some patent-related questions. Um, I think the encounters are twofold. First of all, as makers deliver patentable solutions, they may wish to obtain for patent protection. And as you may know, patents are expensive. They require very deep pockets. Uh, for instance, in Germany, a patent costs around 6,000 euro, and this uh, sum, uh, does not include maintenance fees and attorney, attorney fees. Uh, apart from these procedures, they are very complex and complicated and, get, and this gets even worse once you decide to apply for patent protection in more countries. And that's why you need a good patent attorney and you need to love your patent attorney and you need money for patent attorney. The second situation is unintentional, I dare to say, patent infringement as a result of working, improving and tinkering on patented ideas. How does it happen in case of makers? Well, as said, makers do like to share their ideas either via posting in the internet or within offline communities when they make with friends or neighbors and they develop the ideas. Uh, is it enough for patent infringement? I'm afraid so. Because patents are legal instruments affecting the public domain they give you the right to exclude third parties from manufacturing, offering to sell, selling, but also to from using a patent device in certain circumstances in public zone. But apart from that, makers are sometimes unaware of patents, and not because they ignore them, but they wrongly assume that a solution they're working on is simply not patented, because it seems for them too obvious. And here, I move to those challenges and the weaknesses of the patent system. Um, the first one is the patent quality. As you may know, if you apply for a patent, your application must meet three criteria. It must be novel, non-obvious and industrially applicable. But at the end of the day, according to statistics, um, there is 50% failure in the patent validity. And that's really scary. Mm. Because can you imagine of any other industry or business sector that would survive this level of production or efficiency failure? I don't think so. And nowadays we cannot, nobody can give you 100% guarantee as to the validity of your patent. Experts suggest systemic drawbacks and insufficient training of patent examiners. Mm. So we have a system full of trivial patents that enjoy the patent protection of 20 years and they successfully can block others in their workings. 
So weak patents undermine the trust in the patent system, but much worse, they land uh, in the hands of patent trolls that completely destroy image of the patent system. Mm. Patent trolls go after small and medium-sized enterprises, very often, unfortunately, startups established by makers, and without evidence, they claim patent infringements. And what's worse, the system allows them, it gives them tool to do so. Oh, I need a bit of water. Pardon. Can you? <laughs> I have some minutes, I can. <laughs> Thank you. I'm back. And there are patent flexibilities. Patent flexibilities, patent exceptions, patent limitations. These are tools that give you the right to use a patented solution without the, the authorization permission of the patent holder. And as they take away a part of patent exclusivity, they were formed very carefully and so gain very narrow scope. Here I would like to address briefly three, three forms of patent flexibilities that apply the most to the maker, the making scenario. First is private and non-commercial use. As the name uh, suggests, it applies to private and non-commercial uses. But the scope of private or personal use is very limited and it applies mostly to domestic use. So once you decide to share the tinkered idea of some patented solution, either online or with your friends or with neighbors, you leave the safe harbor of the private use. The experimental use goes a step further to the public and allows testing on patented solution to expand the understanding of them, to find new solution, to, new, to find new application. And that's what making is about. Uh, this exception is very common in various systems, but the construction lines is very di diverse. For instance, the German doctrine is very generous and allows testing that leads to commercialization and even patenting. But the US doctrine remains very, very conservative and rigid and exclude any conducts that have even the slightest implication of commercial use. And as said, success, successful making is not far from commerce and commercial applications. Another aspect in this, under this point, um, making is about testing, but making is much, much more. It's about being creative. It's about playing with ideas. It's about mixing elements. So it's very challenging for makers to stay within the rigid framework of their experimental use. The third doctrine, the third point, is the repair doctrine. I think everyone intuitively feels what it's about. It's about repairing a broken device. So if the element is broken, you are allowed to replace that part. But um, the doctrine still hasn't answered a very important question. Where is the border between the legal repair and the legal reconstruction? Um, mm, and as said, in making is much more than just repairing. Um, making blurs the borders between repair and reconstruction. And um, as case law is very rich in this field, it's very hard to find guidelines that would tell you what is exactly um, allowed. And if you want to, to define the scope of permissible repair with, um, with reference to a particular device, you need to get into patent claims. And please tell me who does read a patent before repairing a device. And what's more, whether it's nowadays uh, possible to find a device that would consist of just one single patent. I'm afraid no, and that's why I think that repair doctrine is highly inapplicable and not only for, for makers. Uh, summing up my, my short talk, I think the maker movement uncovers the drawbacks of the patent system. As mentioned here, it's the patent quality and narrow patent flexibilities. I called my, um, I named my, my presentation patent challenges for makers, but I said these are the weaknesses of the patent system.
because the maker movement shows that the patent system is wrongly applied and unfortunately does not safeguard a balanced protection. Thank you.